In this video, I'm going to show you a septic system installation. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel is all about DIY. I save a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask for in turn for making this video. So we're going to be going over the leach field, the tank setting, the lines, the whole nine yards. So let's get started. Months ago, before we started construction on this house, we decided we wanted the leach field here in this area. Before we can install the septic system in this area, we need to have a perk test done by digging a perk hole. This will determine how well the soil drains water and ensures the system functions properly. Once complete, we can have the inspection done by the local health department. This tank is made of strong injection molded polypropylene. This has a capacity of a thousand gallons and is a lightweight design which makes it much easier to install than the old concrete tanks. It features reinforced ribbing for added strength and it has built in lifting lugs for conventional handling. Now we're digging a hole to ensure that the tank sits about six inches below grade. This depth allows proper coverage, ensuring stability and easy access for future maintenance. If you're wondering about the dimensions, this tank measures about 127 inches long and about 62 inches wide, so the hole needs to be just slightly larger to ensure a good fit. This extra space also allows us to level the base properly, which is crucial for the tank stability and proper function. If you're wondering the distance from the house the septic tank needs to be installed, it's typically anywhere from 10 to 25 feet depending on the local codes and regulations of your area. And some things determine that too, like soil type, slope of the land, and size of the system. So always contact your local jurisdiction to see how far you can have it away from your house. Once the hole is dug and leveled, we can lower the tank into place, ensuring it sits at the correct depth below grade. This tank can be buried four foot deep, making it a highly adaptable for various insulations, and it can handle pipe diameters of up to six inches. With its structural reinforcing heavy duty green lids, the tank is designed to withstand pump outs without any distortions. And believe it or not, this tank only weighs about 320 pounds, which makes it easier to maneuver and install. Now that the tank is level and into position, the next step is backfilling. They carefully filled the space around the tank with the excavated soil in layers, making sure that it's evenly distributed around the tank. This ensures that the tank remains secure and prevents any movement of shifting over time, and it's important to maintain that consistent pressure around the tank as it's installed because you want to make sure that it's stable and level for years to come. After we remove the lids and took a look down into the tank, as you can see, it's one large tank and it has two fiberglass supports in the middle to keep it from collapsing when there's weight on top of it. Even though this septic tank does have supports in the middle and is very durable, you still do not want to drive any equipment or vehicles over them. Now we need to connect to the plumbing that's in this house. We're releasing the water now from the water test and then we're going to run a four inch pipe from the house to the tank and we're going to do a slope of about a quarter inch drop per foot and it's important they don't have too much of an aggressive slope because that's just as bad as not having enough slope so a nice gentle slope to the tank is what we want we're using a 24 inch bucket on a backhoe to dig the line the excavator is going to drill a hole on the inlet side of the tank now He's going to use a hole saw that's going to be appropriate for the grommet that needs to be installed for the 4 inch pipe. Each grommet manufacturer is going to be different. With this particular grommet, about 4 and 3 eighths seems to be about right for it. And with a hole saw, it can be one that can be used for cutting wood as well. It'll cut right through this polypropylene plastic fairly easy. And after that hole's cut, we just slide the grommet right into place. What the grommet does, it gives us a place to slide the pipe in and out of with ease without having a permanent connection. This allows for when the ground's settling and whatnot to have some play, which is very important. We're using grease to lube up the grommet so the pipe slides in easy. Because this is a very tight seal that is not going to allow water to penetrate through it, you want it very snug. My excavator is using a shovel just to get started into the grommet. Then once we get started, we can get some more leverage in on the pipe. 
And yes, again, it's a very tight fit. Here he is using a hammer and a block of wood to help protect the pipe to drive it into place. Again, that's what you want, a watertight seal. If it slid in easy, it would not have a watertight seal. So on the outlet side, we did the same thing. This side is going to require a longer piece of pipe. We are cutting it using a Sawzall. Slid it into place just like the other side before hooking up our T on the inside of the tank, which I'm going to show you that here in just a moment. This pipe on the outlet side of the tank will only be containing water so you can get away with a slightly more aggressive slope compared to the inlet side that will have solids. On both the inlet and outlet side of the septic tank is what's called a baffle. It's a T that's facing down with a section of pipe and what that section of pipe does is prevent any solids from going up to the top and making them go down so that they settle to the bottom quicker and that's going to allow the system to work more effectively. Now that we have the septic tank installed, the next critical component is the distribution box. This is a small yet very important device that evenly distributes the wastewater from the septic tank into the leach field. Here are the common items that come with a distribution box. One are the gray inserts. These are the flow control inserts that regulate the flow of the wastewater going to the drain lines. They fit into the ports of the distribution box and they twist to adjust the height of the wastewater to manipulate how much goes to each line. Next are the yellow rings. These are sealing gaskets or spacers that ensure that there's a tight fit around the pipes to ensure that there is a watertight seal from the distribution box to the pipe. Next are the orange caps. The orange caps are simply just caps or covers for each access point or port that's not being used to you can seal it off. It's very important that the distribution box be installed level. The installer installed a concrete cookie and leveled it up first so that way we have a solid base and it's easier to level that way. He then placed a distribution box on top of that using a two foot level to fine tune the leveling process. Again, it's very critical to do so. Because we are on a slope, the distribution box is going to be setting right where the first line for the leach field is going to be. So that way, it obviously is going to make sense when you look at gravity-fed systems. The pipe being used on this system is 4-inch Schedule 40 solid core PVC pipe, and we are gluing the connections together using primer and heavy-duty PVC cement. Now that we got our trenches dug for the 4-inch pipe, we're now going to switch from our 24-inch bucket to a 36-inch bucket. The 36-inch bucket is going to be needed for our leach lines, which you'll understand more in just a moment why. To switch the bucket, the backhoe operator lined up his arm with the holes in the bucket. As you can see, the mounting pin is pulled back, and after we are lined up, the excavator drove the mounting pin through the bucket and arm so that they are attached together. After attaching the lower arm, the upper arm of the boom needs attached. The backhoe operator is going to extend the arm forward until it lines up with that section of the bucket. Once that is lined up, the mounting pin is then placed. After the mounting pin is placed, we're going to place the other pins on the opposite side of the mounting pins to keep them from sliding out. Now that the bucket is connected, we are ready to continue installing our leech lines. The installer set up a rotary laser level, which I'll put a link to this one in the description below of the newest version of it. And this is going to be critical to installing the leech lines level because they cannot be sloped at all. To begin and end each leech line, we must install what's called a septic chamber end cap. And this simply gets drilled out for the four inch pipe to enter into it at the beginning. So we're using the same hole saw here that we used earlier to drill into the septic tank and this drills very easy as well. And as you can see here, the end cap steps down to begin the leach field line. And this is a step down because we need the gravity fed line to go into the leach line. So from the distribution box, as you can see, it's a straight shot. The installer is going to measure from the distribution box to the end cap and add about six inches, three inches go into distribution box and three inches go into the leach line. And then we're going to connect our septic chamber to that to continue the run for the leach line to go to the leach field. This installer likes to put dirt on the end cap at the beginning in order to hold together the septic chamber and the end cap. 
and it gives you a solid start here so the pipe doesn't slide out of the end cap. Here is a septic chamber up close. It has supports in the middle so they don't collapse real easy and here's 85 of them stacked together for this job. These are also constructed out of the same plastic as the septic tank so they are strong and light and great for septic chambers. The septic chambers typically just hook together like an interlocking system like you see here. They're almost like a tongue and groove snap lock connection and when you align the chambers you want to make sure they are square with each other the best you can and make sure you install them level into the trench and that's what we're doing here with the rotary laser level very important concept when you're installing the leach lines because we want that water to just float across the whole bottom of the leach line so you can see up close how the septic chambers hook together they just hook simply right on top and then they just kind of snap together on the sides to create a good seal. Again, this ain't a watertight seal, but it's definitely enough to keep the dirt from going into the leach line. And we simply just keep running the leach line out for the distance that is required. This is going to be four leach lines together here for this leach field. And they are going to be 80 foot long and that's all that was required due to the absorption rate of this soil and the household size. Here is a clip to show you how far away the distribution box is from the septic tank. And now that we are at the end of the first leach line, we're going to install an end cap here. It's the same idea as the one we installed at the beginning, except this one does not have any pipes going into it. It just simply ends the leach line. And that is all there is to installing each leach line. And something I'd like to mention, we had to keep our leach field at least 100 feet away from our well. So I'm sure that's kind of a general code, I'm sure. But check with your local building codes to see exactly the proper distance you'll need to install your leach field. Depending on what size lot you have may also manipulate what type of a system you'll need to have installed as well. So a smaller lot might not be allowed to have a system such as this. Again, always check your local building codes when you start building a house to see all the specs that you need to install anything on the property. And similar to wiring and plumbing your own house, some areas will not let you install your own septic system because you have to be a licensed installer even if it is your own property. So again, check your local building codes. So for the next line, we're going to elbow away from the distribution box and head towards the second line. And this second line has a simple gradual slope right to it. And we're going to enter through the side of the end cap this time. And when we enter through the side, it's the same idea. We just add a few inches so that we're plenty far into the leach line. And then after we get that secured, we just install that line just like we did the first line. Pretty straightforward. And this is all the lines coming out of the distribution box. And that's what it's going to look like after it is all full. Now that the septic system is installed, here's a quick overview. We went from the three inch pipe and expanded up to the four inch pipe going right into the septic tank. And then from the septic tank, we ran over to the distribution box. That was a distance away that was sloped to it. And once we got to the distribution box, our lines from there went with four inch to each leach line, which created the leach field. And it was a simple system. As you can see, we got three lines headed downhill away from the first line going into the side of our second line. Then once we got to the third line, it was the same concept. We went right into the side of that chamber. And then on our fourth line, same idea. We went into the side of that. The 480 foot lines is totally suitable for this size house. It's a three bedroom, two bath. And the perk rate here was really good, so it should be no problem. And after everything is complete and graded, as you can see, we've got a beautiful leach field right below the house, and this will serve this homeowner well for years to come. If you'd like to see how I'm going to install this well pump, check out this video. It'll help you out.